it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video I'm going to talk about tapping tiny threads in a production environment where you have to do multiple tiny threads. This is a recent video I put out about tapping tiny threads by hand and uh, various tips and tricks. I'll put a link in the description below but this video is going to be more about uh, production tapping of tiny threads. <laughs> So here I'm going to use a tapping head to tap a bunch of 3mm threads in this base plate. And um, in a recent video I talked about ways you can hand tap very small threads safely without breaking your tap. Um, when the threads start to get a bit bigger, you want to CNC cut your threads if you have a CNC machine or use a tapping head. And at about 3mm I start to become more comfortable with uh, semi-automatically and automatically tapping your threads, especially if you've got a reasonably big number of them as I have here. So here I'm using a tapping head in a manual milling machine and there's some real advantages in this for small fragile borderline threads and that is that a part like this will just float into position if you hold it with your hand and each time you retract the tap out, you can brush it off with a little brush that also contains the cutting oil. And uh, you've got to manually do that anyway in a CNC machine. Um, so I figure you might as well do the whole thing in a manual machine. You've got one hand for the milling machine quill lever and the other hand to float the part into position. It's just as quick you've got more control, you can sit down low and eyeball it more comfortably like this and in a relaxed situation be in more control than you can on a CNC for very borderline threads such as around three millimeters. For larger threads there's a lot to be said for uh, automatically machining them within the CNC program if you have uh, that type of machine that's capable of that work. So I've just tapped a bunch of 3mm threads through a 12mm plate. That's approximately 1 8 through a half inch plate. Um, and I'll just go through some of the things that I've learned over the years doing this type of procedure. So I'm using a light Chinese automatic tapping head that reverses direction when you lift the quill up of the machine. Um, you can set a clutch on it so that it's set very sensitive so the clutch slips before the torque of breaking the tap is applied. Um, so hopefully if you've got that clutch set sensitively enough you can tap the thread and yet it will skid before it breaks the tap. But in addition to that I've used this trick that I've portrayed in other videos where I've ground down the shank of the tap above the thread 
to below the core diameter of the tap. That's the type of tap I'm using there on this job. And if it's going to break, it'll break above the part so that I can still screw it out. So that's the secondary backup safety procedure because you really want to avoid breaking a tap under at any cost. Don't break a tap in the part below the surface so that you can't get it out. So I've been using this uh, tapping fluid Realton A9. Put it on a brush and apply it because that way you're also brushing off the chips and applying the tapping fluid. I've got an automatic stop set up here on the mill that takes the torque. And um, I'll just put the camera on a tripod and show you a couple of things relating to that and the clutch. So I've set the clutch so that it will skid before it breaks the tap as far as you can estimate. So that's, you know, um, I don't know what that is, four pounds of torque or something like that on the end of the spanner. And you make that adjustment on this tapping head by loosening that little grub screw there and turning this ring around which puts your spring tension on a, a ball or something inside it. So that's about three quarters of a turn for a three millimeter tap. I can just briefly show you that with it running. So that would happen rather than break the, the actual tap. That's something like the system in a battery drill, I'd say. So you've got also got the stud coming down from the machine to contact with the drive arm. And that frees you up because you've only got two hands. One is to hold the work down on the table and float it in position. The other one is to operate the quill lever, which brings the tap down and lifts it up just before the uh, tap head chuck contacts the work. I'll just talk briefly about type of taps. So these taps are called either gun taps or spiral point taps and they push the chip ahead of the tap. You can see there some of the uh, swath or chips from under the part. So it pushes the chips ahead of the tap and these are very good for through holes or for very deep threads because they require the least amount of torque of all the types of taps to cut the thread. A, a conventional hand tap or a machine tap uses more torque and there is a, a greater chance of breaking the tap. A machine tap has a spiral that pulls the chip up out of the hole and they're needed for auto automatically machine tapping blind threads but a gun tap is great or a spiral point tap is great for going through the part and pushing the chip right out the bottom. Now I'd far rather do uh, work with a gun tap in this type of tapping head than I would a machine tap. The chances of breaking a machine tap are much higher especially if you're using if you're doing a blind thread so you definitely want to grind a safety diameter on a very small machine tap so that if you do have a breakage you can still extract the tap without ruining the part especially if the part is high value and you've done a lot of work on it already for example so whenever possible use a gun tap or a spiral point tap now you can use these for blind threads as well but just be aware that the chip is going down to the bottom of the hole and at some point it will block up the thread and you will uh, bottom the tap and that will cause a breakage as well. So depending on how deep the hole is and how deep the thread is, you may be able to use a gun tap in a blind thread as well. In this video I won't be talking about rolling or forming taps. Rolling or forming taps are really worth considering if you're doing a lot of production threading of softer materials, but if you're doing a wide range of materials, including steels and tool steels and so on, the traditional uh, cutting style of tap is more versatile. Let's have a look at the difference between a gun tap and a machine tap. So the black tap, this one here is a machine tap, and you can see the spiral there will pull the chip up out of the hole. There you can see the gun tap has got the uh, cutting rake the other way and it pushes the chip ahead of it. 
Now you can use a machine tap quite happily in the larger sizes and it will pull the chip out fine. What I'm talking about, why I'm preferring a gun tap is only in extreme fragile tapping situations. You know, if you're tapping a 2mm or a 3mm or maybe a 4mm thread, I would far rather use a gun tap or a spiral point tap than a machine tap. Because you can see with a machine tap, there's a lot more of the tap has been gutted out to provide clearance for the chip. And a gun tap doesn't have to be gutted out as much because the chip is going ahead of the tap. Therefore, the gun tap is stronger. So on a borderline situation, when you're using very small, fragile taps or, toughing very, or tapping very tough materials, use a, a gun tap or a, whenever you can. Okay, just digging a bit deeper into some of my previous comments. So I've done tests in the past measuring the torque between the different types of taps. And um, I just said briefly that a gun tap, spiral point tap, uses the least torque compared with a machine tap. Or a hand tap. Um, that's not quite that simple. Um, the, a hand tap comes usually in three types, a, a primary, a secondary and a bottoming tap. Well if you compare a new secondary hand tap with a spiral point tap, gun tap, then they're about the same torque. Um, so in, in those comparisons they're about the same torque. But if you compare a gun tap with a, uh, a bottoming hand tap or a machine tap, then the gun tap will use less torque. And obviously you want the minimum torque when you're in borderline situations with small fragile taps or uh, very tough materials. And of course remember, I think I've mentioned in previous videos, there's also taps called series taps or serial taps and they have have uh, three different depths of thread in them that you follow through one after the other. See, so, you know, a number one tap, a number two tap, and a number three tap, and they take much less of a cut. They take less torque than any type of tap. But they're not suitable for machining or production work. You'd use those perhaps in tool making, tapping a very difficult uh, high chrome steel or high tensile steel. Uh, situation where you really don't want to break the tap and you're very carefully hand tapping. So I use a little D-bit grinder to grind that reduced shank diameter or shaft diameter of the tap so that it breaks outside of the part and you can retract it with a pair of vice grips. If you don't have a D-bit grinder, I did a couple of videos recently on D-bit grinders and dressing the diamond wheels if you're interested just go back um, a few videos before this current one um, if you don't have a d-bit grinder you can mount a little a fine wheel on a bench grinder and I'd really encourage you to do this if you're doing uh, fine machining work because it's really handy to have a fine wheel like that for lots of different tasks gutting out drills and end mills and so on and you can manually grind that little reduced diameter in your tack, tap shaft. Uh, you don't have to have it perfectly concentric or even perfectly round. Um, the best effort will be good enough as long as it's a smaller diameter than the part of the tap that goes down inside the part. Then it will break above the part and you can retract the tap using a pair of vice grips. But if you wanted to, you could put a couple of little stops on the uh, bench grinder and grind quite accurately using that method and turning the tap by hand. For small threads it's really important to use a good quality tapping fluid. Here I'm using the Realton A9 aluminium cutting fluid. You don't need much and if you apply it on a brush you're also reducing the chip, uh, removing the chips at the same time. I decanted into these little bottles with extended tubes on them. That's just a piece of uh, wire with the copper core pulled out and that's really handy to apply it into difficult to reach places. You don't need much. A big bottle like that will last for hundreds of jobs. 
I should include this in the video because I know there's folks that are just getting started or on a tight budget, but you can make your own tapping head from a battery drill. It's actually ideal in a lot of ways because you can set the torque to whatever you like. So you've got the safety, you've got the reversing very handy just on the flick of a button. So let me show you what I did when I was getting started is I made a simple slideway just out of a bit of angle iron with a couple of slots in it and then it was a previous battery drill to this one but I had a couple of holes that lined up with the holes in the battery drill and then I could just come down here we are I'm sort of simulating it here but imagine this you come down to the hole switch it on pulls itself down flick reverse pushes itself back up put the next part in or the next hole and so on so it's pretty easy to make your own DIY do-it-yourself tapping head so let's just zoom in on that so it's mounted on the side of a milling machine head or you could probably do it on a drill press it's just a bit of angle iron with a bit of plate a couple of brass bushes sliding there there's probably better designs than that that's just a quick little way of knocking something together in a couple of hours well thanks for watching guys I hope you found that useful like and subscribe if you did thank you